Okay, hello and welcome to the uh, second demo of your evaluation um, series. Um, in this demo, we're just going to give you a real simple overview of drag and drop modeling. And uh, RNCAD was the innovator of this. They still are. Uh, no other program in the industry does drag and drop modeling. Uh, it may appear that they do in some cases, but they really don't. But once you get to see RNCAD in action, you'll understand why. So let's get started we're just going to really do a simple part so the first thing we're going to do is create a new scene so we're going to go file new scene and if you remember uh, the scene is where we do all our 3d design say okay and for this one we're just going to pick I guess a, a black uh, background with a reflection on the parts okay so there we go um, as you can see my interface is set up a little different the search tool I really don't need so I, I can exit out of that um, we got the catalogs down here which we're going to be focusing on but I'll leave the scene browser open as well so the first thing you do when you start modeling is you come to your catalogs this is where you this is where you drag and drop all your your uh, these are features these can be parts uh, we have drag and drop animation tools drag and drop sheet metal tools, drag and drop library components, drag and drop colors, drag and drop textures, bump maps. Uh, these are some of the custom colors I've created for myself. So you can see we basically drag and drop everything. So what we're going to do is start with some shapes. We're going to just build a simple block with a hole, with maybe a, a maybe two plates that bolt together and a sheet metal part. All right, we'll just keep it simple. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag a block, and if it's the first part you drag into the scene, it, in the background it automatically knows to orientate the origin point, which is this anchor we call the anchor here. Just the center. It automatically will put that at your uh, uh, 0, 0, 0, XYZ coordinates. Okay, so if you're going to be bringing this part into a cans cam system later on, you'll know that, all right, the middle of that part is 0, 0, 0. Okay, uh, just a quick tip, uh, oops, sorry, um, to let you know that. So that's always with the first part dragged into an empty scene. Okay, uh, so now we drag this part in here. Let's call this. Um, we're going to make this a bracket, so typical Windows form, you just two clicks and you can rename. Now we want to resize this uh, block. There's several ways to do that, but let's just uh, go through the clicking hierarchy here. What happens is, um, being that everything is done in a single scene in RNCAD, uh, we don't have separate part files or separate assembly files or separate sheet metal files or weldment files or whatever the case may be everything is done in one scene that's not to say you can't separate everything out if you want to work that way but RNCAD tries to make everything more streamlined more efficient more easy for the end user okay so let's just stick to the way we we feel is the best approach at the moment okay so to negate all these separate specific process specific environments this is how we do it it's simply a, a, a mouse click process so with nothing selected if I click once you notice I highlight a part and you know that part is highlighted because it shows up in cyan edges if I click twice I highlight the feature now if we expand it here you see the block feature if I click it three times, I highlight the face. Okay? So the process is one click part. I'll, if you click in the background, you clear your selections. One click part, blue. Two clicks is the yellow with the red handles highlighted. And three clicks is the green face. Part, feature, face. Okay? One, two, and three clicks simple as that um, now with most CAD programs most of the editing is done at the feature level right so 
what we can do is I want to make this block let's say four inches long by five inches wide by an inch high so we click once twice to get down to the feature okay now uh, you can pull on these handles for quick conceptual design okay if you want to just visually drag these handles like this to kind of eyeball something on paper like a, like a napkin sketch you can by simply dragging these handles all right uh, for more accuracy you can if you notice uh, I'm gonna clear and then click if I click on this you can enter the dimension right here hit enter I'll click this handle and now it's gonna change this direction and four and click that one and one okay very quick there are other options we're not going to show you. I'm going to keep this one simple. So now, let's say I want to make this an L bracket. I want to put an L on this side. So if I want to rotate my view, I just hold down my middle mouse button, and I can rotate my view. By the way, it's very sensitive. So if I go closer to this edge and rotate, it's going to rotate around that edge. If I come over here and rotate, see it's rotating about that edge. So depending where your mouse is is where it's going to rotate. As long as it's on a part, that's where it's going to rotate about. Okay. So what I'm going to do is now I want to add a block coming up here to form an L bracket. So I can just come here and drag anywhere on this face, and it dra and it'll put the block on there. Uh, now we want to have this face line up to this face so what we're going to do is show you a um, smart snap it's unique to ironcad um, you basically what what smart snap is is if you you drag a handle let's say we're pulling this handle and you're trying to line it up with this surface you notice you're not it's not really you're not getting it perfect no matter how you try you're not going to get that the only way you can get that super accurate is holding the shift key Okay, so if I drag that back there, now hold the shift key and drag that handle, boom, it snaps right to that face. And you can see perfectly lines up. Okay, and now we're going to do the same for this side and the other side. So in this case, I want to drag this handle because it coincides with that face. I'm going to hold the shift key. Now I can either pick the face or the edge or any key point along that face because the it's it's lining up anywhere on that face so I'm just gonna pick the face right now I can't get to the face back here so in this case when I drag this one I'm just gonna pick the edge okay middle mouse rotate you can see it's perfect over there and we want to make this one inch wide so one click to click gets me to that feature right that second block feature I'm gonna click this handle because I want to move that face and put one so you click on the handle that associates to each face and I kid every face gets a handle okay so if you want to move this face pick that handle that's associated with it right okay and now in this case I want to move that face up so I want to click this handle and I'll make it two inches. Well, let's make it three inches. Okay. Now we have our L bracket. By the way, I was if you zoomed in here, little trick is if you go anywhere in the blank area of the scene and double click your middle mouse button, it fits the scene for you. If you like to work in perspective, you have a perspective tool here that gives you a little bit more realism. Uh, it's actually better practice to just when you're designing to stay in isometric form. That way, when you're looking at faces, you're not getting any distortion. Okay. So there we have our L bracket. So let's rename it L bracket. Now let's say we want to put um, uh, let's say we want to put a hole in the middle of here. 
how would we do that? Well, we come to our shapes catalog. We already dragged blocks, but now I need a hole. So I look for a hole cylinder. That's the one I want. If I left click and drag, you notice I could drag right to the center of that face when I get that bright green dot. It indicates I snap right to the center of that face. Okay, and it went through the part, and I can drag this. If I don't want it to go through all the part, I can enter it how deep I want to go here. But in this case, I'm just going to drag it through. Okay, and you can see here your H cylinder. Uh, let's make that a half inch diameter. So one, two clicks, and any one of the the, the handles associated with the diameter of the cylinder will work. So it doesn't matter which one you want, you pick, they all work symmetrically. So I'll just click on here and say 0.5, enter. Ooh, that may be a little small. So I'll click on it and make it 1, enter. Okay? And we have a hole. Now let's say we want to put a Let's say we want to put a sheet metal bracket that comes down flush here, comes down, and then has like a Z bracket to it. Uh, or maybe comes down around whatever. We'll make it a little sheet metal bracket. Well, we don't have to go into a separate environment. We just come down here to our sheet metal catalog. Okay? And start dragging our stock in. And I know what you're saying as well. How do you know what size stock you're using? Very simple. If you go to your options here on the your property browser and you go to the sheet metal here and hit plus and hit stock, you have a whole library of stock that you can customize as well to your needs. So let's say we want a uh, 16th aluminum here, 16 uh, thick, say OK. Now what it does is it transforms all these tools to act with as though that you're using 16th stock. Okay. So if we drag the stock right to the center here, you see it comes in flush, it's 16 thick. And we can do the same thing. It shows up here as our sheet metal part eight. One click is the part, two clicks is the feature again. So we can use the handles and use the shift key to snap. Whoops, click it twice so I can s make it flush. Snap to that edge snap to this edge right so we're sitting flush there so but I want to come out maybe two inches well actually I'll bring this side in a little half inch in so I'm gonna click this feature one two let's see we got that block highlighted I'm gonna um, right click on the handle this time don't have to I'm just showing you a different approach and say edit size box and say minus a half inch. And by saying minus it, it comes in. All right. Now I want to put a bend down on my sheet metal. We'll go to the sheet metal. I'm going to just come to the bend tool. And depending on which edge you pick, let me zoom in so you can see this a little better. If I click on the bottom edge, the bend's going to go down. If I go on the top edge, the bend's going to go up. So I want to go down. And I want to hold the shift key and snap flush to here. Okay. And now I'm going to do an in bend so it stays flush here. And I'm just going to pull this over like that. So we have a nice sheet metal part. Okay. Pretty much drag and drop. Um, very simple very flexible okay uh, I want to put a hole in my sheet metal part you can see it's lined up perfectly and let's say I want to put a rod in the middle here a separate rod so I'm going to come here and grab my cylinder and this time instead of left click and dragging I'm going to right click and drag to the center and what that does is give me the option to either make it a feature or a new part or an assembly feature which we won't get into this in this tutorial so but I want a new part so I say drop as part
comes in as a new part. We can call that the rod. Okay, and if you're not, you you know everything's gray here. So let's drag and drop a different color here. So if I go to surfaces, I'll make the rod yellow, and I'll make uh, the bracket teal. You can even change the sheet metal color. Let's say you want that uh, orange. Whoops. Drag the wrong part. We'll go back to teal here. Just drag the colors right onto the parts. Um, we have uh, some real time rendering. So if you just right click and go to realistic, maybe you want to see a shadow map here. And I'm going to change the high quality and max it out. So now we get some more shadowing here that we can see in real time if some people like to see that. Uh, just keep in mind if you're dealing in large assemblies that will slow you down. So, so we're going to um, change this diameter again to 0.5 because I believe that now it was actually 1, right? 1. And now I want this rod to come through. So I just want to click the feature and pull it through. Maybe shift to the bottom so it snaps to that bottom of that L bracket. Click twice again and right click edit site and say add an inch to it. Okay. And then we have our rod in there. So that's pretty much drag and drop in its simplest basic form just to showing you um, the difference between the, the some of the different catalogs um, the difference between left click and dragging and right click and dragging so uh, with that I don't want to get too much deeper into it uh, practice a little bit with that uh, there are some labs on the uh, MagnaCAD evaluation website so I, I would strongly recommend you they're really quick short and sweet and simple give them a try and um, if you have any questions email us at support at magnacad.com all right hope this gave you a little bit of an insight into drag and drop modeling um, have a great day